No audio. There it is. Check, check. All right, there we go. Thank you so much. Sorry for that uh, little uh, little delay. Somebody turned here. off All our right. soundboard. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> and then Mitchell Miho with the with the comment of the day. We can't read lips since your mustache is blocking it. LOL. All right. <laughs> A very nice job, Mitchell Miho. Comment of the day. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, start all over again. Hi, welcome to SBR Sports Fix. My name is Peter Lojak. This is the uh, live show that we do every uh, morning at 10.30 Eastern time. It's uh, Thursday, September 14th. Jansen Bonzone starts off by saying that it wasn't a cotton day for Oakland yesterday, but the low-hanging fruit didn't lose. It did push. So once again, uh, the low-hanging fruit uh, was not a loser. And uh, overall, I went three and three in baseball, but because I had a couple of underdogs there, I had a winning day with uh, with a quarter of a unit. So I'll take that. Any any little positivity, I will add to my record, not giving it back. So three and three yesterday, it was a winning day. Uh, thanks for uh, Richard Banks for the uh, positive comments to start the show. Sorry, but a lot of people making a uh, kung fu movie uh, dubbing uh, subtitle jokes. Oh, I could, <laughs> right. do, I could do that during the little uh, clips. <laughs> yes. Uh, edit later on. That's a good idea. Write that very down. nice, very nice. Uh, the, uh, the 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 peanut gallery was very quick with the comebacks with the with the joke for the. Uh, okay, so all right, let's see. Uh, okay, Drew Y saying, Pete, I need some insight into early games today. I like to follow. You. Okay, we'll get to it. Yes. So yesterday was uh, was an interesting situation. I told I forgot who it was, but uh, one guy I told him uh, to, to to stay off of uh, Washington. I wound up taking Atlanta on the second half, which cashed. Didn't have the balls take him on the full game, and I would have had another unit if I had uh, done that. And Jarrell Cotton, you know, nice, uh, you know, nice job by Jarrell Cotton, but it was a uh, it was a push, the low hanging fruit. And um, let's see, where are we what are looking at here? And uh, and that was that. All right, so let's look at the uh, the game for the Thursday card first. Let's uh, let's just uh, God, that was all confusing. Uh, the uh, the little uh, threw me off my game, threw me off my my pattern, my uh, my vibe. Yeah, the whole pow the power strip that runs all of our audio is just on. Not on. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. Okay, so uh, uh, all right, let's see. A lot, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of comments here. So let's first start off with football games, right? Two big football games tonight. Uh, one of them, of course, is uh, is very interesting. The uh, the college game. A lot of interesting factors there. I did take a shot with the under. It's uh, New Mexico against against Boise, of course. And the issue here is that Boise starting quarterback, if you're not already aware, Brett Ripien is out with a concussion here. And the guy replacing him, a transfer from Kansas, a guy who could be okay, but a lot of uh, a lot of question marks surrounding him. The other factor is just, of course, that uh, Boise much stronger in the trenches in general than New Mexico. Last year, they absolutely dominated uh, New Mexico and, and blew him out. So even without Ripien, could easily see a blowout here. I did take a shot on my personal account with the under at, uh, at 58 and a half. Uh, the only issue here is just that uh, New Mexico, of course, uh, you know, they run the triple option, so they could put up their share of points. And just because of the advantage that uh, Boise will have in the in the trenches, even with this new quarterback, uh, they could easily just dominate dominate New Mexico in the running game and put up their share of points. I got burned taking the over in the uh, Boise State-Troy game. I thought that one was going to go over under so maybe I have a bad read on on Boise totals but in general I thought that uh, that maybe the under uh, might be a good bet here uh, you know again it's a short week Boise has to deal with the triple option here uh, but they probably can and so that's a very tricky game a lot of factors are involved there uh, probably Boise has the edge even without ripping in at uh, at 14 pinnacle is down to 14 uh, the you know the uh, the uh, the line is headed down uh, again they did dominate New Mexico last year Probably they can do it again just because of their personnel, and uh, I would take a shot with the uh, with the uh, with the under. Last year the game was high scoring, went over, but uh, Ripian had a big passing day, and of course that won't be the case here. We're probably going to see a lot more running from Boise State here, and again they might there might be one of those high scoring games where New Mexico can't stop Boise's running game. But if they can stop Boise's running game a little bit, uh, then it should go under. And it's hard to get a read on New Mexico's defense because they haven't really played anyone this year. Uh, so, so uh, you know, their defense has been okay so far, but against a bad competition. So that's a very tough game. And then, of course, the Houston-Cincinnati game. Uh, Cincinnati opened up as a three-point favorite all the way up to six or six and a half now at the Greek, despite the fact that they got, uh, you know, that they, uh, not they got shut out, but despite the fact that they uh, that they played so poorly uh, and, uh, and that, uh, and that, um, and that Andy Dalton uh, looked very mediocre. The offensive line looked terrible. Houston didn't look that great either. I previewed that game with Al McMorty, and he gave the opinion that uh, that uh, when two NFL teams uh, – teams, oh, no, they did get shut out. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they literally did get shut out. That's right. Uh, Alan Morty likes the over in this one. It's a very, very low total, 38. And uh, watch the video with Alan McMorty where he uh, breaks down uh, that game and makes a very good case for uh, we're taking the over at the low total of 38. So as of right now, uh, on my personal account, I did make a small bet on the under in New Mexico and Boise. Didn't touch the Houston-Cincinnati game yet. And uh, I don't know if I like that under uh, uh, enough to give that one as a pick because, as uh, everyone knows, I care much more about the picks that I give publicly than the bets that I actually make. I'm totally fine with uh, with making a bet that I think has value and losing it. Not really that fine with giving a pick publicly and losing it. So uh, mm-hmm. I'm a lot more risk-averse and a lot more careful with the picks that I give here publicly. So those are the two uh, college football games. And then, of course, we also have a WNBA. I had a good, uh, good read on the first two uh, W. What are they doing in there? I don't know. Keep going. I'll talk to them. Are they having a party or a meeting? All right. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, uh, so, um, just want to... <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, yeah, so we, uh, on the WNBA games, we had a, uh, we had a, uh, uh, I had a, on the games, uh, in the on the first uh, games in the two series, and I think we're probably going to see more of the same, just a little bit less stark. Uh, Minnesota got a big cover, and the game went way over in uh, the first uh, matchup, and I think probably no reason to expect anything different. Although uh, it'll probably uh, be a little bit closer. We saw the same thing last year. Uh, Minnesota had a first round game; they uh, they covered, and the game went over. And then the second game, uh, they also covered, and it also went over, but they were uh, both a lot closer. So uh, I would. Uh, I would be leaning that way as well. Uh, the total is up at 164 now. The spread is 10 and probably a slight leans there to a Minnesota once again and the over once again, but not uh, not going to bet that one yet and probably will just pass on. And then Phoenix and, uh, and L.A., uh, not looking like a Phoenix is going to have enough to hang close with L.A. Of course, uh, Phoenix still playing well since uh, Brittany Griner came back, but uh, L.A. just looks a little bit too good and uh, nine and a half points probably not quite enough. So uh, the WNBA games I'm going to pass on. And uh, but although I would be leaning um, the way the first, I'm leaning for towards mostly a repeat of the uh, of the first two games. All right, so let's see what else do we have? Yeah, Hako Schofield says thanks you for stopping my Washington pick. Yeah, I mean in general Atlanta has been undervalued on the road this year. And uh, Washington, of course, as we know, already in the uh, playoffs. And again, you had a, you had a youngster, Gohara, with a big upside and a huge line. If that had been a bit of a smaller line, I, uh, I would have probably hesitated and begged off it. But uh, I jumped on that one at plus 300 when it came out. It was just too high of a line there. So, um, all right. So let's see what else we have here in, uh, in MLB today. Let's see. All right. Let me see. Hold on a second. All right. Okay. Uh, Blake Kersey say here, hold on, let me sit, hold on, I'm going to put in my earplugs here for a second, hold on, let's see if I find my earplugs, ridiculous. All right, well, while we wait for Pete to get yep. back, we can talk about his wonderful sponsorship from Intertops. Uh, we got two promo codes, Low Shack First is 100% up to $500 on your first deposit, and then Low Shack Reload. I'll be right back, got to go back to my office back there, and uh, and your earplugs, you see, what we did was we put the, the, the place where we do these shows right next to a conference room, which is, uh, and the reason for that is so that the noise will filter in. So it was a, there's a purpose for it, but I'm going to get my earplugs. I'll be right back. Okay. Well, maybe I'll come hang out with you guys for a second. Let me just get my life together over here. Hi. I don't really have anything to talk about, but I feel it's a little weird for you to stare at nothing while Pete's in the other room. So what's up, guys? This is new, huh? I used to be on this side of the TV. How are we all doing today? So yeah, again, thanks to our sponsors, Intertops, and you guys should definitely check out the promo codes we have in the description below. Let's see, this is hard work on this stuff. Well, wait, tell us about some Costa Rican sleuths. Man, I'm married. I got no Costa Rican sleuths at all. But uh, one of the guys did ask about the cost of living down here. I can answer that real quick. It's uh, expensive. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye. <laughs> got my earplugs. Now, uh, whoops. Now, hopefully, the uh, the noise will only filter into the no, microphone. You do not want any of my picks. <laughs> not to my head. All right, let me just, uh, hopefully, this will work. If not, I have some of those, uh, some of those, uh, uh, I think that's like the drillers use. I'll go back and get that actually. Let's see. 
Okay. Okay. There we go. I'm hearing my voice in my head, so it's going to be a weird show today, but uh, that's okay because this show is low priority on the tone board, but that's all right. Okay. So, MLB today. Let's get into it. MLB today. Uh, starting off is uh, at, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I go. Okay, I'll hold, I'll hold them right here. All right, so MLB today, let's see. Um, starting off, there is, of course, uh, the White Sox and Detroit at 1 o'clock. And uh, Detroit, uh, the, the White Sox tend to hit lefties well. I had a, a winner yesterday on, uh, <clears throat> on the White Sox first five innings uh, facing a lefty, and that one did cash. And today, feeling the same way, Shields, of course, is, uh, is, uh, is a subpar starter in general, a little bit better recently. Excuse me, but uh, but Bell is uh, is uh, at his best uh, as not not any better than Shields at his worst. Looks like again, like the White Sox might be a, a good play as a uh, as an underdog here. First five innings. Let me just quickly check what the line there would be. Let me just quickly check what the line there would be. White Sox, yeah, plus one ten, plus one fifteen. Five times has one twenty. So uh, so yeah, small underdog play there. I might wind up giving that one. That is a, a definite lean for me. Bell is a guy who uh, has not done well in the majors, and his minor league numbers were uh, were uninspiring as well. So the White Sox in the first five innings is uh, is definitely a lean. Let's see what else do we have here. Also, the Yankees against Baltimore. Miley against uh, Tanaka feels like a spot where the Yankees are going to do well. Uh, Tanaka coming off a start where he did get hit, but as is often the case when Tanaka struggles, he still had strikeouts, still didn't give up any walks, and uh, feels like everything is okay for him to uh, have a bounce back start here. And Miley, of course, pitching a little bit better recently, but uh, but still generally very very vulnerable. It is a high line, but uh, the Yankees minus one might be worth a shot uh, even in the uh, in the minus one eighties. And uh, let's see, what else would be interesting today? Felix Hernandez makes his return for Seattle. And uh, he didn't have any rehab starts, only bullpen sessions. I'm not a buyer on him right now. And Kashner continues to get results. Sometimes he has okay peripherals. Sometimes he has uh, uh, crappy peripherals. But the one consistent thing about Kashner is that he does tend to get results, start in and start out. It's a very low line here. Tex has been slumping out a little bit recently. But... Uh, I would be at this line. I would be leaning Texas and maybe uh, Texas minus one. So we'll have to think about that. Then we have uh, Peacock against Alaska in Houston and the Angels. And Alaska, of course, has uh, one of the you know uh, he, he's a sinker baller, so there's high volatility with him. A lot of times he can uh, you know, sometimes he can have a good start, but uh, but most of the time he's pretty vulnerable. So a, a, a good a, a good start from Alaska out of nowhere would not be a surprise here. But he has clearly been struggling and Peacock. Uh, you know, a guy who uh, has big upside still, uh, you know, gets a lot of strikeouts, making a spot start here. It's a one-off for him, so he might be in for a good start here. So uh, Houston struggled yesterday, and they've been struggling badly in general on the West Coast right now. I did take a loser with the uh, Houston first five innings team total yesterday. But in general, uh, I would be leaning uh, Houston here minus one and maybe Houston on the uh, – on the team total over. Let's see, what else do we have here? Pitching change in the Cubs game. So uh, that one, I am, uh, I am, uh, I have not uh, had a chance to look at. Um, and of course, the other one, which uh, which is almost low hanging fruitish, is uh, the Cincinnati St. Louis game. Garrett against Weaver. Garrett, of course, the guy who's uh, struggling majorly in uh, in in the major so far, and uh, and just looking like every start out. He's going to be iffy. Cincinnati is just running him out there every five days or six days to get him some uh, some experience and some work in. Uh, but he's looking like they're just going to have him uh, try to work out his kinks uh, in the majors, and that might happen. You know, at any point he could have a strong start, but more likely than not, likely to struggle on any given day. And on the other side, of course, Luke Weaver, who has been absolutely reliable and excellent and awesome, start in and start out. I did take a shot with St. Louis here, minus one on the overnight line when it was around minus 195. Um, I assumed that that one was going to go up significantly, but I thought that, uh, you know, of all the big favorite lines that we've been seeing recently, this is one that uh, probably does have uh, have some decent value, uh, even at minus 220. So I would definitely be leaning St. Louis minus one, maybe even leaning St. Louis on the uh, first half or the first five innings uh, uh, run line, and maybe the St. Louis uh, team total over, Cincinnati team total under, stuff like that. Then the Oakland-Boston game, also interesting. 
they lean to the over on that one as well. Uh, Gossett is, uh, is, is okay. Pomerantz okay. But both of them have been struggling a little bit more recently. And uh, we saw the game yesterday go over. And I think we'll see uh, a similar thing today. Let me just quickly check where the total was. It was nine and a half on the overnight line. And it is, uh, it is yeah. All right. So now no nine and a halfs available. Now it's 10 everywhere you look. Uh, I have to make a decision on that one, but I would definitely be leaning uh, over on that one. And let me check the second half on that one. Is it three and a half or four? Is it three and a half or four? Yeah, it's four minus 110. So a slight lean to the over on the second half, small lean to the over, uh, full game on that one. And uh, yeah, all right. So those are my picks. Let me just, uh, those are my leans right now. I'll have to decide what I want to convert into picks, maybe all of them. White Sox first five innings, a definite lean. Oakland, Boston over and the second half over, definite lean. St. Louis minus one for sure, at the very least, a lean there. The Arizona Colorado game, we'll get to in a second. That is, uh, that's definitely interesting. Yankees. Minus one, a definite lean there. Uh, Texas, minus one, a definite lean there. And probably, one way or another, betting on Houston to, uh, to hit in Alaska, probably a, a decent play there as well. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's look for some, uh, some, uh, some recent comments here. Uh, Hako Schofield saying, a lot of overs today, Grand Slammy Day. Yeah, I could, uh, I could see that. The Arizona-Colorado game could go over. The Oakland-Boston game probably going to go over. The Detroit White Sox game, two uh, questionable starting pitchers. Even the Toronto-Minnesota game, Barrios is starting, but, but he has been, uh, he's uh, been shakier recently. Toronto is also a, a, a team that I might be looking at as a big uh, underdog there. Uh, Fernandez and Kashner. Uh, uh, pretty uh, pretty questionable right there. So yeah, I could see an over on the Grand Salami being a good bet. James Stacy says, "Hi Pete, Toronto again today. Under first five and full game. What do you think? Let me uh, find the uh, yeah the Toronto. Um, no, I would. Ah, uh, you know, you might be right. You've had a great read on Toronto in general, but uh, I'm not so sure. I like the uh, the under in that one. Barrios has been uh, definitely." Uh, wearing down a little bit as the uh, as the season has gone on. Anderson has been good. Anderson has been uh, quite good, but Minnesota does have some decent bats in that lineup. And uh, let me just check one thing quickly. Uh, let me just check one thing quickly. Yeah, that one is uh, – that's going to be a pass for me as far as the total is concerned. You might be right – on the uh, on the under, uh, you know, Anderson and Barrios could easily have a, have strong starts, and in that case, the under will cash. For me, it's it, it's going to be a pass. Barrios is looking like a guy who uh, might be a little bit overvalued going forward because he is uh, he, he appears to be wearing down a bit. And Anderson is good, but not necessarily uh, lights out. Uh, Al Hard asking about the Angels again today. Uh, that's a that's a tricky one. Um, that's a game I'm, I, I don't really know. I mean, Houston has clearly been, uh, been slumping out on the West Coast, and probably their fortunes won't change until they leave this road trip. Uh, on the other hand, Alaska has been very, very vulnerable, very, very hittable. Peacock again on a one-off start here, and, uh, and uh, I'm guessing that he will have a decent start at the very least. So maybe Houston on the first five, maybe Houston on the first five innings total. That's a very, very tough one. That's a very, very tricky one. Here we go, Akko Schofield. Only 12 likes. Come on, people. Support Pete and Marty. Yes, thank you very much. Hako Schofield. Mitchell Miho says, Boston always seems to let me down. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I, would want, I don't think I would, I'd want Boston here in the, in the minus 200 range uh, because Pomerantz, again, he's good, but he has been coming a little bit back down to earth recently. And, uh, and, and Gossip on the other side, you know, and Oakland does have some bets. So if anything, I would be leading Oakland at that line, but more so I would be leaning on the uh, – on the over. All right, let's see. Uh, Melissa Mansfield saying posting for Berna Blunt. Uh, who, who's Berna Blunt? Who's that? I don't know. That's a good name. That though. is a good name. Who's the? Well, I've never seen it. Yeah, get Berna Blunt. Like a, a low hanging apple a day keeps my banker away. Thanks, Pete. Okay. Not sure who Berna Blunt is, but it's a cool name. And thanks for the comment, Melissa Mansfield. Me and Melissa Mansfield, by the way, are going head to head on the UAB game. Well, I don't know if, if uh, Melissa Mansfield likes, a, uh, likes Coastal Carolina. I gave the opinion that I like UAB, and I actually gave that one as a pick, and uh, Melissa Mansfield challenged it, saying that UAB uh, sucks offensively. They have no returning starters on offense, uh, and I, you know, I'm certainly not high on UAB in general, but they did do well against Ball State last week, and um, I said my sense is that they probably uh, come away with a win here, but uh, I'm going head-to-head -head, uh, with Melissa Mansfield on, uh, on this, uh, on this uh, UAB game. That is a, oh, Melissa Mansfield saying, bring it on, Pete. Okay. All right. You want me to bring it? I'll bring it. I'll bring it, Melissa Mansfield. Ooh, ooh feisty. Ooh, I like it. Feisty, feisty. Oh Melissa Mansfield. Yeah. 
Uh, listen, I don't know. Uh, uh, you, you might be right there, but that is an official pick that I gave, uh, plus two. And not that this means a whole lot, but last time I checked, it was just plus one. I moved in my favor just a little bit. All right, so Naeem225 says, need a solid pick for an early game today. Well, the early games, I think, do have a couple of picks that I am liking. Uh, White Sox, first five innings, liking it. Oakland, Boston, over, liking it. St. Louis, Big line, but minus one, liking it. Uh, you know, I just think the edge there is is, is too big. The uh, the full game is, I mean, the first five innings is probably just too high of a line, so I'd probably just stick with the uh, with the first five innings there. Let's see, yeah, the first five innings run line is minus 145. I just go with uh, with uh, St. Louis on the uh, minus one line, but uh, but yeah. So I uh, uh, Jim Jim Rome's a douche saying that's definitely a dude. How do you know that, Jim Rome? Jim Rome's like, there's no way a chick would be flirting with Pete and liking Pete. No, I think Melissa Mans. Field is a is is a real woman. That's not a dude with a beautiful penis. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's a dude. Jim Rome's a douche. How do you know that? Jim Rome's a douche is poking a hole in my fantasy right here. All right. So oh, that's a good one too from Rich. Mm -hmm. If he sends a hat to you that says OG, oh, will you wear it on the show? Oh, I'll wear anything. Oh, anything you wear, even if it's like anything you send, any article of clothing, I will I will wear. I will wear it. And not only that, I will I will uh, do some testing for how lucky it is, and if it becomes lucky, I'll wear it every show. Absolutely, anything anything anyone sends me, uh, I will absolutely. As we wear established, it. Pete last week wore a shirt that he pulled out of a burned out building. <laughs> yes, that is that is true. Anything anyone sends me, yeah, and it doesn't have to be something that you bought. It can just be something you got out of the garbage and then send to me, and I will wear it. Yes, for sure. <laughs> hey, Pete, I found this piece of shit. You know, Pair of pants. Will you wear this one? Yes, absolutely. I will. All right. Let's see. Uh, all right. So early games. Yes, like in the White Sox first five, like in Oakland, Boston over, and like in a St. Louis uh, minus one. The Arizona game. Uh, you know, um, I got burned taking Arizona minus one with Branky starting. It appears that uh, that Arizona should have a, a big edge here again. Bettis is looking like uh, you know not. Although he has you know. He, he, he's, he's, he's not giving up any walks, Bettis, but in general looking very, very hittable, and Godley is, is looking pretty reliable, not lights out, but pretty reliable. I was thinking about a shot with the over. I wound up taking the over on uh, yesterday's game late, and that one, uh, that one did cash, uh, but now it's up to 9.5 or 10, so yeah, there's no way I'm going to take that one. I'm not going to take the over there, so yeah. Early games, three picks that I am uh, that I am kind of liking. Uh, Michael Maeda says, it's a man, baby. Ha ha. No, it's not. I think it's a woman. I think it's a real woman. People, people just like. I think it's a real woman who uh, who, who kind of respects my handicapping opinions and likes to comment and, uh, and likes to talk back and forth with me. Why is everyone so so doubting of that? That's a possibility. All right, so let's get to some uh, let's get to some uh, some picks here. I got to convert some picks here. Some of these uh, leans to picks. Uh, start with the White Sox first five innings. Yes, I will give that one. White Sox first five innings. I cashed with them yesterday as an underdog. And uh, here, let's see. Uh, the uh, the best line right now would be uh, plus one fifteen at a, at UAGER BetOnlineSportsBetting.ag. But probably Pinnacle will have a a slightly better line. Let me just quickly check that one. Let me just uh, quickly check that one. No, White Sox yeah, plus one eighteen. I'll make that one a pick. White Sox plus one eighteen. I can't believe I'm betting on James Shields for a while. I had James Shields uh, pegged as a guy I was going to auto fade until he retired. But uh, but you know his last start was okay. Probably he gets hit here a little bit. But uh, but if I'm, uh, I'm guessing that the Detroit, if Shields gets hit, probably gets hit a little bit more. And uh, so I will take the White Sox first five innings plus one eighteen at um, at uh, at Pinnacle and uh, and also the first five innings team total over. For, for the White Sox is probably a decent play as well, as is probably just the, uh, the first five innings over. Let me just quickly uh, check what the first five innings over here would be for the, uh, for the White Sox. Two and a half minus 113. Yeah, that is damn tempting because Bell does not look like a guy who can go five innings, even against the lineup like the White Sox. And as we know, the White Sox, terrible team, right? But still top, top team in the majors against lefties, according still? to my numbers. Still. Still. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that is from, from their, you no, know. No, 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 I mean, I get it. It's, it is surprising that they're it still. It is surprising, right? Yeah, even, even if they were just, like, top five or whatever. Very surprising. So I like the White, uh, the White Sox here, too, uh, to hit Bell a bit. And uh, you know what? I'll go on it two ways. I'll take the first five innings, uh, team total over 2.5 minus 113 as well. That's a little bit risky because you are taking the White Sox here. Even it sucks. <laughs> but I will take both of them. The White Sox first five innings, team total over two and a half minus 113, and the uh, first five innings uh, money line. I will, uh, I will take that one. All right. So next game on the, uh, on the docket, uh, Oakland and Boston. I like the over, even though 
even though it is uh, there are two starting pitchers who uh, who can be good. Uh, I took it at nine and a half on the overnight line, and I will throw that one on there. This one might lose because Pomerantz is is is, is excellent, and Gossett can be good. But I will take it over ten in Boston, Oakland, uh, minus one thirteen. That's the current line at Pinnacle, and then St. Louis and Cincinnati. I have to take it. I have to take uh, uh, St. Louis at minus one. I'm getting a much worse line than I got on the uh, on the overnight when I took it, but I will take it anyway. The money line part of that will be minus two fifteen at Pinnacle, and the run line part of that will be uh, minus uh, minus one oh eight also at Pinnacle. So that's a high favorite line there for St. Louis minus one. But uh, you know Weaver, I have no reason to expect him to not be great again, and Garrett, little reason to expect him to be anything but hittable. So that one should probably uh, cash easily. So four plays on the early games, and uh, and then, of course, and yes, yes. Again, this is risky taking all these minus one lines, but uh, Marty Ice, I know you follow the Yankees very, very closely. I'm expecting to not get have a good start, even though he had got hit his last time out. What do you think about that? Yep, he's he went from somebody I don't really trust on a daily or weekly basis, I should say, to somebody that I do. Have to guess. So yes. I'm very happy with him. I'm, I'm pleased as to the way their whole rotation is playing right now, and I would be okay with trusting him, despite what happened last week. Yeah. I trust him to get hit hard like once or twice out of every six or seven starts. I trust him on, a, on, a, on an any game, on an any, any individual game. I'm not surprised if he gets hit, but over a, a chunk of games, I trust him to have a, a good start yeah. four or five times. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm taking it. The Yankees minus one. Uh, the money line part of that one will be minus one eighty one at Bet Online Sports Betting AG, and the run line part of that will be uh, plus one oh six at Pinnacle. So again. Yankees minus one, a decent uh, uh, favorite line would be about minus one thirty-five or so. But uh, but I'm taking it minus one forty or so. Uh, Yankees minus one. I will make that one an, an official pick. And then Felix Hernandez against Andrew Kashner. I'm just not really sold on Hernandez right now. And Kashner, again, similar to Shields. I thought Kashner was going to be a borderline auto fade for most of this year, but really impressive what he's done. And uh, maybe I'll take uh, Texas again. Here, minus one. I will. I'll take him. I'll take him. I'm not a buyer on Felix right now coming in here. Mm -hmm. I think he's overvalued, uh, not having any rehab starts, just uh, just bullpen workouts. So I'll take that one as well. Another pick. Texas, minus one. Money line part of that, pinnacle, uh, minus 104. And the run line part of that, uh, plus 170. Three at Pinnacle also, plus 173 at Pinnacle. So that's a, an underdog line there, a healthy underdog line there for Texas, minus one. Houston Angels, I should probably just stay the hell off of that one far, far away. Then the Cleveland game, are they going to win again? Probably they will. Casey's starting pitcher is Junis, though, and that guy is a guy who I have been betting on uh, more often than not this year and, uh, and, and, and generally doing well with him. He's a guy with some, with some great stuff, gets great results. Tomlin on the other side can get hit, but often uh, has a strong start, and Cleveland is just a juggernaut. It's amazing. Marty Ice, remember, at the beginning of the year, I went into Marty Ice's office, and I said, Marty Ice, Cleveland might be a great bet this year. You remember that, Marty Ice? Vaguely. Vaguely, really? You don't remember that? You I remember know? having a conversation about, about Cleveland. this already before. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> we, I, I went into Marty. I was like, man, I'm doing my MLB research, and I was like, Cleveland might be a great bet, even though they're a great team. And, of course, for the first, I don't know, two-thirds of the year, they were a terrible bet, especially at home. But, uh, you know, and I was like, all right, I guess I was wrong about that one. But I was like, at some point in the show, I said many times, at some point they're going to bounce back, and they bounce back in a major, major way. So Cleveland is definitely a juggernaut, great bullpen, great starting pitching, great to line up, and that's all there is in baseball. So, you know, probably they're a good bet again, but I'm not going to take them here going up against uh, Junis. Junis is a solid starter who can keep Casey in the game. But, you know, probably they do win again. And if someone wants to uh, make a case for betting on Cleveland, I certainly uh, couldn't talk them off of it. Uh, all right, so we'll get to some comments in a second. Once again, my official picks, White Sox first five innings and White Sox first five innings team total over. Oakland, Boston over. St. Louis minus one. Yankees minus one. Texas minus one. And uh, that's it for now. Six picks. Six picks. I might throw on some others uh, in a bit. Toronto on the first five innings is tempting because, again, Barrios is just looking like a guy who is a little bit vulnerable right now. All right. So let's look at some comments here, some comments here uh, covering the games. Hmm. Let's see. Al Hard asking about uh, Seattle Rangers under. Yeah. I, uh, I actually did have the under in the game yesterday late. I wound up deciding on that one late, and I would be leaning under here as well, despite the fact that, uh, that I'm kind of down on, uh, on Felix, uh, Hernan Hernan Felix Hernandez. The uh, line is 10 or 10 and a half. 
Uh, you got to get a good start from Cashner, and Hernandez has to be okay. I'm probably not going to bet that one. I'm probably not going to pick it, but uh, but I would have a slight lead to the under, definitely. If you gave me a free play on that one, I would definitely take the under. And I might actually wind up being a great play. And I might, who knows, I might wind up being on it. But uh, yes. I, mean, I don't know I about in the very recent past, but I know that the Mariners do not hit well when Felix pitches. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, the, right now, uh, Seattle's been doing well on the road, and in general, they have a good road record this year. Uh, someone's saying Wang Jo is in the house. I don't think that's true. Is it? No, no, no it's not. They're just kidding around here. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. So, yes, I would lean under, and I might be uh, leaving money on the table here as far as, uh, as, far as not giving that one um, as a pick. Seattle has been good recently, uh, but yeah, I, I definitely like a Texas here, and I'm definitely leaning under. Seattle team total under might be worth a play as well. Yep, there you go. James Stacey just said it. Seattle team total under five. That's a, that's a high-ass team total. Let me see. Seattle team total under five plus 100 at Pinnacle right now. Yeah, James Stacey, I mean, uh, I kind of like that one as well. I'm just going to stick with my play on Texas minus one on that one, and I don't think I want to double up on it, but I'm definitely leaning under, definitely leaning Seattle team total under. All of that is just, uh, you know, kind of uh, here. Justin Paroli saying, Casey shut out four of six against Indians this year. Oh, yeah, that's right. Was the Cle really? Cleveland was the, there was remember there was one series where KC scored literally zero runs over three games in the entire series, and That's I think that was against Cleveland. Yeah, they literally scored zero runs. I think that was at home. I'm trying to remember uh, what that series was, but yeah, KC uh, can really get held down by uh, by Cleveland. So look, Cleveland on the run line or minus one might actually be a uh, another uh, uh, another great play. Dallas Starbois says Texas under easy fruit. You might be right there. Look, I'm leading under. I might think about that one. I might, I might give that one a, by the end of this. Uh, by the end of this show, let's check. Jim Rummy asking, uh, and Dallas Starbob, Minnesota, Toronto under nine and a half. I like it. Maybe I don't know. It's just for real. It makes me nervous. Uh, that part can, can can play high scoring. So uh, that's a that's a that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. Nine twenty five. St. Louis run line first five. Yes, I would like that one. Uh, I'm taking them on the minus one line on the full game in, instead because uh, if they don't if they don't uh, win the the first five run line, then uh, then I definitely uh, you know would uh, wait, what am I trying to say? I can't remember what I was trying to say. But uh, but yeah, no. St. Louis run line on the first five innings is uh, is is a play that probably does have some value. Uh, let's see. Other uh, other comments here. Uh, Twins money line. Nick Lamb asked about the Twins money line uh, again. Look, it's just a matter of Barrios. Everyone here seems to be relatively high on Barrios. I'm not convinced. Uh, again, he could have a good start, but he's still a young guy. He's shown some signs that he's been wearing down a bit recently, and uh, I'm not uh, I'm not looking at that one. Uh, I'm not looking to, to bet on Minnesota here or for Barrios to have a good start. Maybe even a shot with uh, the Toronto uh, first five innings team total over or the full game uh, team total over. That is a uh, yeah. That is a. Uh, that's a tricky one. All right. Oh, wow. DP13P says, Casey, top value on the board today. Junis, I don't know about that, pal. Top value on the board today, fading Cleveland. But uh, look, if you bet it, uh, good for you, and uh, I hope you win. Yeah, Talk a team that's been shut out four or six times. They've played another team who's streaking real hard right now. Top value on the board today? I don't know. I can't endorse that opinion, DP13. But if you bet it big, uh, I do hope you cash. All right, uh, Naeem for St. Louis. All right, let's see. Jake uh, CC924 saying Jake Thompson will get smacked around today. I'm on the Marlins. Yeah, Jake Thompson, very, very high volatility. A youngster who uh, who uh, either has a great start or gets hit. He already faced uh, Miami once this year and, and got hit. Got to figure that uh, that he gets it. It is a high team total uh, at five. I'm staying way off that game, way, way off that game. Dan Kelly saying I was going to take KC plus one and a half, plus so I had to lay minus 110. Yeah, welcome to uh, – well, yeah, Jesus, it's uh, it's uh, wait. Let me see. Hold on a second. Not for sure. I'd be getting plus one twenty. Yeah, I guess the emotional letdown play is loved by the books. Uh, by the books also. Yes, uh, they are. Uh, they are onto uh, to the value with uh, the plus one and a half. People like to bet those, so sometimes they do juice them that way. All right, let's see. Uh, other other comments, just quickly. A lot of people talking about Jake Junis, the Texas game. Talked about that one. Hako Schofield fade Tanaka. Okay. Once again, me and Hako Schofield kind of uh, going uh, going head to head. I, you know, look, Tanaka could get hit, and Baltimore has a big lineup, but Baltimore not great on the road, and uh, and uh, I'm expecting a bounce back start, start here from Tanaka. And if Tanaka does get hit, it's not unthinkable that uh, Wade Miley will get hit even more. So uh, I'm on the Yankees going head to head against uh, against uh, Hako Schofield once again. Let's see, Michael Mayetta, Boston bats went silent yesterday. Yes, they did, but they still look the, the, the low hanging fruit still pushed. 
Um, let's see. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> a lot of a lot of a lot of jokey comments. Uh, completely ignoring sports betting in the comments. <laughs> okay. right. Funny stuff. Funny shit. All right. Okay. Let's see. Let me see. Scanning. 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 Hmm. <laughs> Mitchell Milo with a nice uh, Dominic Toretto quote. Mitchell Milo having a good day in the, <laughs> in, 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 the in chat. Very, very funny here. All right, uh, let's see. Okay. And, okay, here we go again. Hoggle Schofield, what do you think about the Texans game? Well, I talked about that. I talked about that uh, in the beginning of the show. I'm probably going to pass on it. Uh, there's been a big line move in favor of Cincinnati. Al McMorty made a strong case for uh, taking the over in that one. And uh, that's the kind of game, much like the uh, Casey and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Patriots game, that I wound up uh, seeing big value on close to kickoff. If I see value on that one or on the uh, Boise State game, I will tweet out a play closer to kickoff. As of right now, it's a, uh, it's a pass. Jay, ask any college football picks. Jay, I've given about seven uh, this uh, already. Um, uh, this week, I gave BYU, UAB. I gave the under in UNC ODU. I gave the under in the uh, in the uh, Northern Illinois game. I gave uh, uh, Florida minus the points, and uh, I think there's a few others that I gave. Can't remember which ones they were, but I will I will uh, summarize all those uh, on Saturday morning with the uh, with the big man show, Jeff from uh, BMOC. And uh, yes, I will if I have any more college football picks uh, tomorrow. I will definitely uh, put them on there and. Um, let me see. Actually, let me just uh, quickly check. Uh, hmm. That's an interesting what's point that? there. What's that? I just lost it. But, uh, oh, gosh. Cotton was playing with a heavy heart yesterday. He's from St. Thomas. Hmm. Now, you would think, you would think that that wouldn't – you think when you're a professional athlete, like, you know, whether you have a heavy heart or a light heart, you're always going to be trying your best. You're always going to be doing your best. But somehow that stuff does matter. As a pitcher, it's such a mental, you know, game. If I was – Yeah. I mean, it just somehow does matter. Uh, Limbs25 asking, any WNBA? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be on, on it uh, tonight. Uh, I, in general, I already covered that. I, I, uh, I feel like the two games first. The two games will go similar to how the first two games went. I like the over in the uh, Minnesota-Washington game in game one. And I like it as well here, but a little bit less so. I like Minnesota minus 10, but a little bit less so. And probably like in uh, you know, the, the, the LA Phoenix game, I'm going to uh, – Gonna hang off of. I'm gonna be looking for second half plays actually with the with the with the two games uh, with the two games tonight. All right. So, uh, Hako Scofield saying good luck everyone. Thanks, Pete. Great show again. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, there was uh, there was all sorts of a uh, of, of drama in the show today, but uh, but in the end, once again, uh, good uh, good information I think from everyone involved. All right. So let's um, hmm, let's see. Sorry, all right. I, Miho. Just, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I got corrected by Mitchell Miho. About mispronouncing his name, Mihu. Oh, Mihu. Okay. Oh yeah, maybe I'm. Oh, sorry. Excuse me, Mihu. My bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Blake Kersey with a comment. He's saying ODU is my local team. Lost their best wide receiver last weekend. Big lose. Yes. Uh, in North Carolina might also be a uh, be a, a good play there. And Old Dominion on their team total under might actually uh, wind up being the best play. Of course, uh, I can't give team totals until uh, basically uh, Saturday morning because that's when they come out. But Old Dominion on the team total under might be a good play in general. Uh, I'm looking for uh, for a strong defensive performance by North Carolina. And, uh, yes, nice comments there, uh, Blake Kersey. I, I've, I've just given the under on that game, and uh, but you might be right that, uh, that the Old Dominion team total under – and uh, and North Carolina minus the points might be a much better picks for that reason um, uh, just, uh, than the rather than the uh, full game under uh, yes Old Dominion in, in not a good uh, spot injury wise for this uh, for this upcoming game all right let's see James Rome's a douche all right okay. uh -huh. thank you limbs twenty five. Limbs twenty five, nice comment. Okay, okay. So let's uh, let's wrap up this uh, let's wrap up this crazy show. Let's once again. All right. So uh, again, uh, Boise, New Mexico, leaning under fifty eight and a half. That's not an official pick yet, though. If I tweet it out, it will be an official pick. If I don't tweet it out, it won't be. But that's definitely the way I'm leaning. I'm going to try to look into it more before uh, before uh, before kickoff. Houston, Cincinnati, pass for now. If I wind up liking a play on that one, I will tweet it out. If not, I will not. 
Uh, then in, in, in a WNBA, no official picks in WNBA, but I would be leaning for the games to, uh, to go the way, much similar to the way the first games went. And uh, once again, leaning, you know, Minnesota over, leaning Minnesota minus 10, Minnesota team total over, probably a, a, a decent play as well. All right, so official picks, White Sox first five innings and the White Sox first five innings team total over. Oakland and Boston uh, over 10 is an official pick. St. Louis minus one is an official pick. Yankees minus one is an official pick. And Texas minus one is also an official pick. Uh, uh, leans that I have, once again, Seattle, Texas under is definitely a lean. Uh, Toronto to hit Barrios is definitely a, a, a lean there. And uh, let me just uh, quickly scan over the team totals to make sure I'm not uh, leaving anything on the table because I might take it. That's pretty sneaky to take a shot with Toronto first five innings Team total over two minus 124. I'm just not a real big believer in uh, in uh, in Barrios right now. Uh, just seems very unreliable to me. But uh, but I'm going to hold off on that one. And yes, definitely the the under in the uh, in the Seattle Texas game looking pretty tempting. Uh, let me just uh, let me just think about that one for a second. Let me just think about if I really want that. You know, I'll hold off. I'll keep that one just as a lean. I'll take Texas minus one, and I will. Uh, I will uh, hold off on that one, although the under on that one is uh, is definitely tempting as hell. All right, I'll just stick with that. Six plays. Six plays today, Marty Ice. Coming off a slight winning day. That's it. Jim Rome's a douche. Very sneaky PR. Right now he's making fun of me. <laughs> All right, okay. All right. Uh, Jay asked about Atlanta against uh, Washington. Any thoughts? Uh, I believe I uh, – oh, no, right. Fultonavich against Rourke. Uh, well, once again, I think that Atlanta is getting a little bit disrespected, not like yesterday. Fultonavich, you know, uh, definitely been struggling. Well, his last start was 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 not as bad as his, uh, like, two or three starts before that. Fultonavich definitely struggling. I might lean Atlanta on the second half once again. Rourke has been good. This one, this is one where, you know, I wouldn't be taking Atlanta here. I don't think I'd want Washington either, though, uh, because you just don't exactly know what you're going to get from Fultonavich here. Probably Washington is the play. But uh, also Atlanta on the second half might have some value. Let me just check that. Yeah, plus 100. That game's going to be a pass for me. Probably a slight lean to Washington on that one because uh, Fultonavich is, you know, looking like he's wearing down in a serious way. So probably I would lean Washington there on the run line, minus one, something like that. But uh, I'm not going to take it because, again, uh, Washington slumped out a little bit recently, and Atlanta has been clearly undervalued all season long uh, on the road. And Fultonavich, you know, could easily have a strong start here. would not be a surprise at all. This looks like right now he's uh, he's wearing down a little bit and, uh, and is more likely than not to, to struggle. So I would be leaning. Uh, I would be leaning uh, Nationals there. Okay. All right. <laughs> Tomori, you know, Tomori, I think in these high variance games with mediocre pitchers betting the dog at a good plus price is never a bad idea. Yes, absolutely, Tomori, you know, Tomori. At the same time, when I see those kinds of games, I still uh, look at the pitchers involved and, uh, and, and, and try to figure out, uh, you know, where the variance, uh, which side the variance falls. Are they, they might have high variance, but are they more likely to have a bad start or a good start? And I think in this case, uh, Fultonavich is more likely to have a bad start. I think he's more likely to get hit a little bit. So, uh, but, you know, who knows? And, and the line just isn't quite high enough. If it was up, you know, closer to plus 200, I'd probably take a shot with Atlanta, but in the plus 150s, not quite high enough. So that's going to be a, a, a pass for me. Oh, Dallas Starbois, like in Boise State over, Pete, could be. The big question is just what is Boise State going to do offensively with the new quarterback? It's an unknown. That's an unknown quantity, and how effective will he be? I can certainly see it because Boise State, uh, you know, New Mexico might just might not have an answer uh, defensively for Boise State at all. So it could easily be the case that the Boise State just uh, runs all day, doesn't pass at all, but still puts up, you know, 40 or 45 points, and, uh, and the game sneaks over with, uh, with uh, you know, New Mexico putting up a couple touchdowns uh, as well. All right, DP13P saying thanks for the promo code. Just signed up for Intertops. Appreciate yeah, it. Sweet. Very nice. Thanks, buddy. There you go. Okay. Tomorino Tomor agreeing. Says, I agree. Fulton Avich is a tough bet. Atlanta has been horrible at hitting with runners in scoring positions since the All-Star break. Yeah, it's just it's, – just, it's, and, and just looking at the lines, lines make you want to pass. If uh, – if uh, if Atlanta was plus two hundred, I probably would take a shot with them. If uh, if 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 the, the Nats were just a little bit less of a favorite, I would probably take a shot with them. They might actually be have some value at the current line, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on it. There, Dallas Starbois saying TCU will put fifty on SMU this weekend. Dallas, that is uh, is actually I haven't given that one as, a, as an official pick yet, but I did bet it, and it's definitely a lean. I definitely do like TCU uh, this weekend uh, for sure. All right, and uh, I think it's and, Star Boy also. Starbois. Starbois. Dallas Starbois. This is very – I like I like the yeah. style you put on. I was thinking of uh, Joe Dirt, Joe Dirte. You know? <laughs> Dallas Starbois. Yeah, that's very, that's very very 80s gay. Yes, yes. I'm sure it? he appreciates that. Yes, Dallas Starbois. 
I, I've been watching a lot for some reason. I've, well, my, my, my latest genre is, 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 is uh, videos on AIDS from the 80s, just like fascinating for about four or five different reasons. But all right. Interesting. So, is that like the bug catchers? Are you watching that? Oh, stuff? did you see that documentary? Yeah. Oh, God. That. That's <laughs> fucked up. Oh, I yeah. That is. That is, I, I've watched that a few times. That is just, that is entertaining, supremely entertaining for about three or four fundamental reasons. It's, uh, yeah, that is crazy. All right. Uh, Jay, Pete, any thoughts on, on a side between Kansas and Ohio? Uh, no, I'll just quickly talk about that one. That was one where when it first came out, I liked the over. It was around 58, then it crashed down to like 54, and I didn't understand the move. I didn't have the balls to bet it on the over at 54, and now it's all the way back up to 59. So I'm liking the over in that one a bit. I'm going to look at it a little bit more, and I will probably uh, have an opinion on that one when it's uh, uh, closer to uh, you know close to kickoff. B. Adabal asking Pete, low-hanging fruit? Uh, you know what? I, I will give low-hanging fruit. St. Louis minus one. That's got to count as low-hanging fruit. Uh, Garrett against Weaver. I don't usually give uh, you know sides or uh, these run lines as low-hanging fruit. But the pitching matchup is just such a huge edge to St. Louis. I bet it at minus 190. I'd rather be getting uh, you know that line than at the current line. But that definitely counts as low-hanging fruit. I think it does. St. Louis minus one against Cincinnati. Just Weaver is so good. Garrett so iffy. St. Louis at home on a Thursday game. Uh, St. Louis minus one, I think, does count as a low-hanging fruit. And I will put that one into the low-hanging fruit category for today. All right. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's wrap it up. Let's see. What is this? <laughs> a lot of funny shit. The, the, the humor in these. Uh... <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Mr. Donkey Punch, 0507. What up, Pistol? All right. This is great. This is turning into a great show. But uh, okay. Let's. Uh... <laughs> Alice Starbois, laugh my ass off. Keep it coming, beat. All right. Excellent. Love all the posters here. Love all the funny comments. Love all the support. Thanks for all the likes. And uh, I think we can wrap it up. It's been a long show. We'll be back tomorrow for the Friday card.